Hello and welcome to a beautiful Saturday afternoon at Kaleida High School for today's Division III District Final matchup between the Kaleida Wildcats and Ottaville Big Green. I'm Nate Garlock, joined alongside by Jerry Snodgrass. You know, Jerry, anytime you reach tournament time in any sport, it, it becomes a special time. And as both of these teams obviously have bigger and better things that they want to accomplish this year, first off, this district championship would be a big notch in each one of these teams' belts. Boy, it sure would. And you know, you know, we'd like to say one's got revenge over the other from a couple weeks ago, but that ended in a 2-2 tie. But, you know, here we are at the end of October, and two schools that this is Friday night football for most of them, you know, during the year. And what a great, beautiful day for high school soccer. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and you mentioned Friday nights for, for these teams. And when you talk about schools like Ottoville and Kaleida, you know, obviously not football schools. Right. Soccer is what these programs do. And so when you get into tournament time, you know, these are big deals. We have a great turnout today, fans on both sides. You know, you mentioned they played uh, about three weeks ago, and that was a 2-2 tie. These teams know each other very, very well, so it should be an excellent matchup today. Should be very much, and, you know, I look, you know, on the way in, and there are fans tailgating out in the parking lot, you know, just like it really ought to be, and I, that's what I love about this. So we will take a look at today's starters first for the Kaleido Wildcats. In gold, number zero, Brady Fersh. Number one, Braylon Smith. Number four, Evan Steckscholdy. Number five, Joel Horseman. Number six, Jacob Siebenek. Number seven, Drew Fersh. Number 13, E.J. Miller. Number 14, Caden Lozier. Number 15, Grant Fortman. Number 21, Dominic Bockrath. And number 22, Jaden Smith. As you see, Ottoville, the big green, controlling the action here. Uh, most of the possession time here in the early going, going the way of the big green. But we have a turnover going back to the Wildcats. You know, it's going to be very interesting, you know, and, and sometimes I'm puzzled. You know, I watched some video of them and, you know, ended in a 2-2 tie earlier in the year. But if you look at Ottaville's scoring, they've outscored their opponents something like 105 to, I think it's 5 on the year. And, you know, both teams very, very solid defensively. And I think that's a big key moving on in tournament. But it's also, you know, when I look at that scoring differential and say, whoa, you know, and you look at, I think there are five scorers for Ottaville that have significant numbers. So, be a very interesting game. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Only five goals given up by the Big Green as they are in the midst of an undefeated season, 17-0-2. Their two ties coming against Continental, who they actually defeated in the district semifinal uh, Thursday night. It will uh, come away with a victory there. And their other tie to this Kaleida Wildcat team, looking to see if they can't write that as well and get a victory. Taking a look at the starters for the Ottoville Big Green in goal, Number zero, Alex Siever. Number three, Grant Lease. Number five, Kellen Schlagbaum. Number six, Jaden Saxton. Number seven, Preston Mansfield. Number eight, Quentin Snipke. Number nine, Jordan Landon. Number 18, Trey Landwer. Number 19, Carter Horseman. Number 20, Landon Horseman. And number 25, Garrett Trentman. You mentioned uh, Kellen Schlagbaum. You know, he has 38 goals on the year and certainly a, a key for the uh, big green offense, but you know one of the big keys I think for Onaville, Mar uh, Coach Marquardt, you know, mentioned that they've got to be aggressive in the offensive end. They've got to use their speed. They've got to win the 50-50 balls, and I think you know that's going to be a big key. You know, as really they are dominating that ball in the first four minutes of the game here. You saw a 50-50 ball that time won by the Big Green. Couldn't quite get anything done with it as the Kaleida defense sent it back over into their own territory, but Ottoville quickly back in possession of it, trying to put pressure on this Wildcat defense. I know, too, they really want to limit, you know, corner kick opportunities, set plays by uh, Kaleida. But, uh, you know, again, Kaleida has been very solid on defense themselves. Uh, Brady first can turn the field, you know, flip the field pretty easily. So uh, we'll just see how this goes, you know, here in the early going. Long kick by first out of goal as the Wildcats trying to see if they can't control the midfield and move that ball up into their fo forward, give themselves an opportunity. Good send under the far side coming down that left channel, but a little bit too much on it as it's going to go out. Going to have a throw in for the big green. You know, one of the things I, I really believe in the sport of soccer too, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, but, you know, you look at all the scoring and the, the dominant games that Ottaville has had, they've had a chance to play so many players. And I think at this point in time, that's a big key second half uh, of games. 
those kids have experience. Um, leaders or starters are well rested. And you know the other side of that coin, though, too, is uh, you know you play a lot of, of blowout games. Sometimes you wonder how your team is going to respond to those close ones. Are they going to be able to, you know, kind of find that that next that next level, kind of dig deep when things aren't quite going their way? Because quite frankly, outside of two ties, they they pretty much controlled every game they played this year. I think you bring up a great point on that. that that's the counterpoint of that is, you know, one hundred percent. You know how. You know, as a coach, you know this. You're a coach. You're telling your players, hey, this isn't going to be easy. You know these other ones. But at the same time, you don't want to destroy their confidence either. So, yeah, you know that. But these are also two very good close rivals, you know, that, and that uh, helps. You know, uh, Kaleida got here with a uh, victory over Lincoln View, and uh, I think it was a 1-0 in, in overtime, and also 10-0. Defeat of Fort Jennings. So a couple substitutions into the game. Grant Lease checks out. Alex Lease is checked in for the Big Green. Also had a substitution for the Wildcats, but didn't quite catch the number that came in there on the far sideline from us, and couldn't quite see that number on the jersey. But throw in for the Big Green. It gets fed up front. Slogbaum trying to break away. Try to see if he couldn't cross it into the box, but nice job getting cleared out onto the side. And it looks like we're going to have another throw in as it came, went out on the left side of the flag. So a nice throw in opportunity for the big green as it looks like Schlagmom is going to take the throw in. Long throw in into the box. Nice job winning that header that time though. Looked like that might have been Landon Vierhoff. He must have been the one that checked into the game for the Wildcats. And I believe, you know, on that last one, Braylon Smith did a good job of, of preventing that easy shot. I should tell our viewers right now where, where we're seated, it is very difficult to see numbers. Ball's going to go out of bounds off of Caden Lozier. So another throw in for the big green. Going to try to see if they can't work that sideline. Ball comes in, ends up towards the middle, tries to see if they couldn't feed it going forward, but ends up out. And Stecksholdy couldn't control it, goes out. Another throw in opportunity. Quick throw in this time. A little bit too far for his teammate. But you see the big green doing a great job hustling, moving to the ball, trying to see if they can't make something happen. And that really, you can tell right off the bat, is such a key for Kaleida, making sure they mark up, making sure they're not behind anything. And so far, I've done a very good job of that with Ottaville controlling the ball in the in their uh, third. Horseman had to hustle to get to that one, tried to move it upside. Great hustle at Lozier, but once again gets poked away. Mansfield's going to try to get to the breakaway. Working against two collided defenders. Feeds it out, and this one gets poked out. As E.J. Miller is able to get a foot on that one, send it out, another throw in for the big green. I talked about the speed of Ottaville. Uh, earlier in the game, or start, but Kaleida has got their own speed, and you can really see it right now, which is why they're playing such good defense. They're staying right with it, staying right marked up on everybody, and not getting behind. Quentin Snip, Snipy that time tried to send it into the box on a cross, and none of his teammates were there. Gathered in by Kaleida's goalkeeper, Brady First, and sent up around the midfield. So now it's Kaleida. They haven't spent a whole lot of time on their offensive side of the field trying to change that here. One-on-one -on -one matchup on the far side, and we're going to have a goal kick. Actually, I believe it's no, going to be a gonna corner have, kick. Yeah, we'll have a corner I'm kick. say last touched by the Ottoville defenders. So first corner kick of the game goes to the Kaleida Wildcats. They're going to let their offense come down, get set up, and see if they can take advantage of this scoring opportunity. And that's something that the Big Green really wanted to you know, limit. Offense moves forward, nice bending. Saw a couple of headers, but couldn't quite square up on that one. Alex Seaver able to gather that one in to keep Kaleida off the board. Seaver gets it up towards the midfield. Slag bomb now, gonna work. Gonna go to the right, tries to see if he can't feed Snipke. Snipke able to chase it down, a fight down towards the, the end line, comes back around, sends it over, and able to gather it in. Grady first. And first, we'll see if he's going to 
See if he can't send it, try to switch the field, or if he's just going to let one of his teammates take it. This one, he takes the big boot, and gets it just past midfield, but Ottoville is able to get ahead on it. Wind is not a factor today. That's unusual. Wind has been so much of a factor in everything leading up to today, but so far, and uh, nobody's had any real scoring opportunities right yet in the first 10 minutes. Yeah, everybody talks about Ohio weather, especially once you start getting into October, early November, but the weather couldn't be more beautiful today. Sun is out, not too cold, not too warm. You know, if you have to pick a, a, an environment to play a soccer game in, and I don't know that either one of these coaches could have picked a better day. And the weather forecast for next week during regional play is in the 70s. I'll take it. It yep. can stay in the 70s as long as it would like. See, this one goes out of bounds. Last touch by Ottaville. Throwing coming for the Wildcats. Nate, I can recall so many times, you know, through the years of administrating soccer on a statewide level where we would talk about snow. We would talk about, you know, many cancellations that had to take place. Now we're in the regionals, and now all of a sudden we're talking 70s. Caden Lozier is going to have a seat as Dominic Bachrath has checked back into the game for Kaleida. Saw that throw and end up going back out of bounds off of Ottoville. So another throw in opportunity for the Wildcats. Braylon Smith takes it. And Ottoville sends it back up. Schlagbaum. Schlagbaum's going to work against his defender. Beats him to the right, but is met by another Wildcat defender. And now you can see Kaleida trying to establish themselves in that midfield. Trying not to let Ottoville get anything going forward. Seaver goes ahead and tries to kick this one down, ends up out of bounds. So Kaleida moving quickly. And you can just see when these two, with these two teams, especially in the early going, how familiar they are with one yes, another. Yes, you can. You, you know, they know what each one's going to do. Everybody's playing marked up. Not a lot of space for anybody. And I, I got a feeling, you know, we have 28 minutes left to go here in the first half. We're going to see a lot more like this. You know, this is one of those games that's going to come down to maybe one mistake, one team being able to take advantage of, you know, one thing the other team does. And, you know, those types of games can become very, you know, mental. And, and mentally exhausting, too, as you see a cross go through. Header off the top, not able to get it to going forward, but collide another opportunity, and this one's going to get sent way out of bounds. They're going to have a goal kick for the What a the great Big opportunity. Green. A great cross that time. And I think those, you know, that's what we were almost just talking about, where you know a little bit of a mistake that time as the uh, collided defender wasn't marked in the box, but not able to take advantage. Not sure how many more opportunities. I mean, that was a great opportunity. Had a header right in front of the net, and you know, headers aren't easy. I wasn't a soccer player, but I'm not sure that I right. want to stand <laughs> in there and, and and you know, with all that traffic and throwing my head around, and that time not able to get the right angle on it. You know, collided, you, but did collided did have a good opportunity. You do, and you, you know, you think about the coordination that it takes, the hand-eye coordination, when I say hand-eye, but I mean the, the body in the eyes to be able to put your head on that coming from, you know, 30 yards away, that's amazing. So now it's Kaleida still continuing to work on the offensive side of the field. Have to push that time, pretty easy one to see from everybody up here in the, in the box on that far sideline, but got some extension, got the big green player down. So I have a free kick for the big green. I think with our experience, you know, that happened on the north end of Kaleida here, and we were still able to see that and call that. <laughs> Ottoville sends the ball up around midfield. Slag ball. Nice work to seal off the defenders. Moves this one up into the offensive side of the field. Slide tackle, able to maintain possession. Good hustle by the big green, moving the ball around. Schlagbaum, the senior forward, I mentioned it, his 38 goals on the year. He's been a dominant, not only offensive player, but a dominant leader on that big green team. Horseman trying to feed that one up to Lease, but just a little bit too much on it. It's going to go out of bounds, so Kaleida with the throw in. 25-45 left to go in the first half. Still 0-0 tie. Both teams looking for opportunities to score. Kaleida had the first real good look, not able to cash in on the header in front of the net. Now we were talking, you know, at the start of the game about, you know, the number of not having football, high school football, 
And we we're also talking that I think it was like 15 of the players from Ottaville are on the basketball program. That's really cool to see. Yeah. That's, I think you see that obviously in smaller schools, that's obvious, but especially in the sport of soccer. So here's Lee's working in the box, not able to get away from Kaleida. And this is gonna stay with the big green. Trying to see if he couldn't find an opening. But nice job by the Wildcat defense to close those lanes, take this one away, gonna try for a breakaway. Ottaville has the numbers though. Gonna have to slow things down. Big Green take it away, and they're going to go back to work. Tries to send it up. And this one is going to fall right at the feet of Brady first. And, you know, sometimes those can be those tricky he, ones. That was, that was a tough one to play. He almost got caught on that. First sends it up forward. Only had one of his uh, teammates back there, so Ottoville able to take the ball back. Not a lot of pressure from... The Wildcat defense at this part of the field. They want to try to see if they can't get numbers around that midfield, control the midfield, keep the ball down here on this end. Horseman. Working against Steck Schulte there, was able to win that battle. And they are using the width of the field today. We've seen a lot of movement with that ball, trying to see if they can't find openings. Now here comes the big green up to Slagbaum. We mentioned Slagbaum, very successful season this year. 94 total points, 38 goals. Big focal point of the Ottoville offense. There's Horseman working off to his right. Steck Schulte comes up for the challenge and Horseman doesn't have much of a choice but to poke this one out of bounds. Steck Schulte's gonna have the throw in for the Wildcats. You know, early in the game with the big green controlling the ball so much, it's really, uh, granted we're on, you know, they're, they're controlling right now, but Kaleida's really flipped that a lot and has controlled the ball a lot in the last 20 minutes, or last 10 minutes. Nice feed to Slagbaum on the inside. It's going to work. Tries the right foot. Wasn't able to get a lot of power on that one. It's, he got that one moving towards the goal, but Brady first, he ate uh, able to easily gather that one in for the Wildcats. Nice job by Schlagbaum of, you know, switching feet. It really shows his athletic abilities, but Kaleida was right there. Header sends it over to the midfield. Going to have a challenge as the Wildcats able to win that one. But the Big Green quickly gained control back. Trepman now just waiting, trying to set something up. Gets back to Horseman. Horseman's going to move it up over midfield. Here's Steck Schulte. One on one to Slagbaum. Slagbaum with a nice feed. Gets it over to Snipke. Snipke feeds it towards the middle, but the Wildcat defense able to kick that one away without too much of a challenge. Nice cross that time, just no one there. Snipke with another cross, but first able to come out of goal and gather that one in. So we're seeing some pressure from the big green. But this Kaleida defense has been up to the challenge. Another fight around the midfield. Back and forth between the Big Green and the Wildcats. It's going to get won by the Big Green. Tries to feed it. But a nice job that time by Dominic Bachrath to get to the ball, get his foot on it, sends it out of bounds. So we're going to have a throw in for Ottoville. You can really see the why so much scoring uh, out of the Big Green this year. They play so well together. Mansfield with the first real shot on goal as Preston Mansfield was able to come around with a right foot, and sent it right at first, but first able to gather that one in. That one kind of got behind Horseman a little bit. It was a little dangerous play. So instead of trying to do anything fancy with it, got it back to his goalie to let his goalie send it up. It's Schlagbaum able to get a foot on it. We have some more battling around the midfield. Feeds this one there up behind go, the yeah. defense. And it's offside, I think. Yeah. Not too many calls I know in soccer, but offsides is one. <laughs> and that seemed like, like uh, a pretty clear one that time as the ball came off the foot. Offensive player was behind the last defender, so. An easy offside call for the officials, and we're going to have a free kick for the Big Green. The 
looked like Horseman kind of changed his mind that time. Looked like maybe yeah, he's going to try to I kick it, he was deep, send and it the deep and last minute decided to use the width of the field, move it over, ends up at the feet of Schlagbaum. First trying to move the ball up, ends up getting intercepted by the big green. Again, great hustle out of both teams. I yeah. mean, we're just seeing a lot of very equal play. This is what you expect to see from two teams that are as talented as they are and know each other as well as these two do. You know, both teams want to win that 50-50 ball, but right now they're both right there. That's a toss-up right now. Handball call by the Wildcats. Going to give the Big Green a free kick on their side of the field. See what they want to do with it here. Hunter Horseman waits back for the free kick. He's going to send this one towards the goal. See if they can't get a header going. Slagbaum was there for the challenge. Couldn't get it to go. But it ends up at the feet of Quinn Snipke. Snipke going to move around to the right. Kicks it back up towards. Nice job nice. by first. Good effort that time to dive out, get his hands on that one. Not allow that one to end up. It looked like maybe... Preston Mansfield was in good position. If that one gets by first, that may have been a goal. But great stop by, by Brady first that time. You know, he's only a junior and uh, has had a great year and is a very, very good athlete. Trying to get it up to Snipke one more time. And this one's going to get kicked out. We'll see as there's going to be a race to this ball. We're going to have a fight into the corner, and it looks like last touched by Snipke, so it's going to be a goal kick for the Wildcats. Fast-paced action here in Kaleida as both of these teams looking to take home a district title. 18-25 left to go in the first half, and we are still scoreless. A little bit of a push yeah, that time for some position, one. but the officials let them play. Wildcats come down with it. First playing, nice job playing with the ball at his feet. Sends this one into the uh, down the field towards the goal, but. No other Wildcats in the area. So saw Alex Sieber able to gather that one in and send it back his team's way. I refuse to jinx anyone, but this has been a very clean game so far. It really has. We've only seen a few whistles, nothing too egregious. Uh, we saw one, one push down here in the Wildcats side of things. But other than that, pretty clean game as this one's going to go. He was able to save it. Great effort that time. And now the was. official are going to call and say, nope, I out thought of he was going to get away with it. It's one of the things that I do enjoy about soccer is, you know, it, this is a very uh, it's a very fast-paced game, very mental, and you, and you see those kind of game-within-the-game type things where these players just move quickly, no one acknowledges anything, and they right. hope maybe they can get away with it. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And as we see Steck Scholte on the throw-in, he has one, what looks like that one went off of his chest, lost it for a minute, but... Ends up back at the feet of the Wildcats. Here's Steck Schulte one more time. Passes it off towards the middle. Wildcats now trying to put some pressure. They don't have the numbers right now, though, as Audeville able to have an extra defender down there, so they're going to have to try to find something. And the official's not calling anything that time, so here comes Quentin Snipke going to move the ball up. Sends it, tries to see if he can't get Schlagbaum running towards the goal. Schlagbaum trying to win. And that one's going to stay with the big green. Well, Nate, you know, as a coach, you know, you always talk to your players about playing through the whistle. Um, and that's a given here. I mean, that's a given. You don't wait for the official to do anything. That ball's out of bounds, you take it. Slagbaum with an excellent throw in. As he has such strength on those. It's a game changer when you have somebody that can throw the ball in from far on the sideline and give yourself an opportunity around the middle of the field. But that time, not able to do much with it as Kaleida gets the ball back, moves it up towards their side. As the big green going to move it. Now here we go, another battle at the midfield. As we've seen a lot of good challenges by both teams around the midfield. And here goes another send one. And here comes Schlagbaum. Looked like he was going to have an opening that time as Jaden Smith had lost his footing but not able to do much with it. Here's Schlagbaum one more time. Gets it over to Snipke onto the right. Snipke going to send it. He changes not. Gets it back to Schlagbaum. Schlagbaum trying to see if he couldn't squeeze it in through some collided defenders. 
The defense does a nice job getting their foot on that one as that one's going to get sent up and out of bounds around midfield. Well, I also mentioned at the start with that 105 to 5 scoring differential by Audeville, and I couldn't figure out how, how did this end up 2 2 when they played. I see now. Great defense by Kaleida. Throw in coming. Snipke able to get it at his feet, but ends up losing it. So Braylon Smith. And a, good, a little bit of a run this time, works the sidelines, going to go out of bounds. Last touch by the Wildcats. Carter Horseman going to hand it off to Landon Horseman, who's going to handle the throw-in duties. Tries to get it up to Snipke on the sideline. Steck shoulder was able to get his head on it. And now here's Smith. Smith moving against this Ottoville defense. Looked like maybe he was anticipating his teammate, Gaden Lozier, maybe moving towards the goal, tried to poke it through there to set him up, but ends up going out of bounds. So we're going to have a goal kick for the big green. Couple subs coming in. Caden Lozier is going to check out as number 18, Dylan Bendel, comes into the game for the first time tonight. Lozier getting a much needed break. Now the big green working along their back line, waiting to set up, seeing where they want to, what they want to do with the ball. Trentman sends it back towards the middle. And right now, Bendel checking into the game, getting a little bit of a workout, chasing that ball against the back line of Ottoville. Now Schlagbaum trying to work against two collided defenders, not able to win it, but still ends up at the feet. Garrett Trentman, so Trentman now, he's going to send it forward. See Lease working worth it. Sends it back over to Tretman, who's going to work to the right side. Seeing a little bit more patience this time out of the big green, trying to set something up as this one goes towards the middle of the field, just booted away by the Wildcats. Nice give and go this time. Now working towards the middle of the field. Tries to see if they can't find. Lease gets tripped up wow. right in front of the goal. No flags, no penalties. He's trying to see if he couldn't work against two collided defenders that time. Got tripped up. Ball goes out of bounds, and we're going to have a corner kick. Quinn and Snipke going to take the corner. And a great opportunity that time by Ottaville. Prior to the corner, we're going to have substitution. And it looks like Quinn Snipke is actually going to come out. So it looked like he was lining up for the corner kick, but instead he's going to have a seat as trying to get a number here. Couldn't quite see number three. Grant Lease now going to take the corner kick for Ottoville. Sends this one into the box. Looking for the header. Goes over the top of the goal. Out of bounds. Him. Says it's going to be last touch by Kaleida. So another corner kick coming. Yep, I think first just got his hand on so now another substitution. And I, you know, I think this is another staple of Ottoville. You, know, you talked about the scoring that they've had, which then does give you the opportunity as you see another cross come in, another header. This one high up, going to have another 50-50 opportunity. Kaleida able to win this one, sends it up. Grant Liso out there, sends it over to the far side. Trentman trying to win this one. And now it's going to be Lease. He's going to work the left side, center is under the cross, looking for slag ball. Gets sent back out. First for Kaleida now. Working one on one, decides to pull it back. Passes it off to Steck Shoulder. Steck Shoulder sends it forward. But only one Wildcat was back for that one, as Ottaville is able to easily send this one back. Really? Well, we were talking about, you know, the substitutions and the scores and different things. But when you're able to do that, you're able to cultivate a, a, some confidence in your bench, and that gives you depth. And for a team that plays as fast as Ottawa does, scores as often as they do, it's nice when you're able to substitute three, four, five guys and feel like you have no drop-off. Yes, and, and playing together like that, you know, I mean, they just, like you say, the, the teamwork, you know, they don't miss a beat when those guys come in. So a handball is going to give Ottoville a free kick. Trentman lines up at midfield. 
Second time we've kind of seen him start or stop. He's going to go with the slag bomb. Slag bomb not able to get ahead on this one. It's Lida, and it looks like Steck Schulte trying to fight on along that near side. And that's going to go to Kaleida. And the officials say no, and Steck Schulte has to drop it. And Horseman is going to handle the throw in for the big green. Landon Horseman throws it in. Steck Schulte challenges. As Alex Lees. And now Slagbaum's going to handle it. Slagbaum, excellent throw in skills. Going to get this one probably all the way to the box. Header goes in, able to get his foot on it. And that He's was dangerous on that. Trey Landwer able to get his foot on it, but sends it out behind the goal. So goal kick coming for the Wildcats. Just under 10 minutes left to go. Still tied at zero. Game is uh, so far lived up to everything that it would build. It was built to be. You know, on the totally useless information that I have right now, which I have to do about every game, what I love about this place, and I hope they get a view of it, are all the lawn chairs here. And it's just a cool, it's a cool place to watch a game. It's a, it's a staple. They probably sell them at their booster club. <laughs> Good footwork by first this time. Good foot skills, able to maintain possession. Ends up out of bounds. Last touch by the Big Greens. He's going to stay with the Wildcats. Bachrath with the throw in. Good job defensively by Drew first for Kaleida. And we're trying to challenge for Ottoville. The Big Green get it. And this one's going to be cut off and sent back away by the Wildcats. Preston Mansfield. Good speed. We've seen him have an opportunity earlier in this game, but couldn't win that one-on-one. -on -one. Ottoville, though, doing a nice job continuing to send crosses into the box, just looking for that one opportunity to put one in the net. This one's going to be sent out by, looks like, the Wildcats. So ball will stay with the big green on the throw-in. Trentman on the throw-in. Ends up throwing into the Mansfield. Tries to head it backwards. Nice fight that time into the cross. And going to be a save that time by Brady Fersh. Ottoville, relentless pressure. Yes, they've controlled the ball for the last, you know, probably six minutes on this end. First with the long kick. Gets it all the way down to that Ottoville back line. They're able to defend very well, though. Send it back up around midfield. And I mentioned that earlier. Uh, Brady first is so, he's so good at flipping the field. As we have another substitution. Evan Clausing checking out of the game. And number 12. I don't have a number 12 on my roster, and so we'll work on finding out who that one is. Now first with the free kick on his side of the field. We'll see if Kaleida, what they want to do with this one, if they want to try to send it or maybe keep it around front. First, going to send it to the far side, right at the corner of the box. Header goes backwards. That one's going to end up out of bounds. Past that back line, so Alex Seaver is going to have the goal kick. Kick up to Slagbaum, able to track it down before it goes out of bounds. Going to have a one-on-one, -on -one, see what he wants to do. He's going to move to his left, beats his defender into the box, tries to send it up, and goes off a collided defender. Slagbaum able to gather it back in. Another cross, but this time nobody from the big green was moving forward, so Kaleida with the easy stop. Horseman comes up with it, though, and sends it in. It's Brady first able to gather that one in. And Going to send us another one away. Long kick. And this one's going to go out of bounds off of Ottoville. Hmm. 
not too many opportunities here lately for Kaleida. You know, Ottoville is doing a nice job. They're leaving four back there on that back line. So it's not giving them right. maybe the numbers that they want to see on the offensive side, you know, relying more on the quickness and speed of Snipke and Slagbaum and Preston Mansfield to get something going, but making sure that they have plenty back to defend, you know, in case of a fast break, as you see. Looked like Trentman that time ended up losing the ball, but stays on the f to the feet of Ottoville. Under five to play here in the first half. See Kaleida with the takeaway. Braylon Smith racing to it, not able to get it. Horseman, as he fights with first, and we're going to have a foul on, I believe they're going to call that one on. I think it was on Braylon Smith, wasn't it? It was him and first, it looked like we're battling down yep. there along with Horseman. One of those two get the whistle, so. We're going to have a free kick this time by uh, Horseman. As Carter Horseman going to boot it away. They're going to look for the header. Wow. Can't get it to go as Brady first goes high to gather that one in as the Ottoville offensive player can't quite see who that was. Came flying in to see if they couldn't get their head on it. And I believe it was number three, Brandon Cleveland. So fight along the wrong side, here comes Mansfield. Mansfield in, decides to pull it back as Tretman now. Just a little two-man game right now as Audible's waiting for some of the offense to get set up. Grant Leash out there. Excuse me, he was number three. Had the wrong name earlier, but Grant Leash gonna have the throw in from the corner as we have some more substitutions coming in. So Grant Leach going to drop the ball as he's going to go have a seat. Here comes Schlagbaum over to handle the throw-in duties. And this is a great opportunity here for uh, the Big Green. Long throw-in, middle of the field, ends up at the feet of Ottoville. Here comes Mansfield, kicks it back out to Schlagbaum. But we're going to have a whistle, and it's going to go back to the Wildcats. It is so impressive, the throw-ins of Slagbaum. Yeah, he is. gets so much air and distance on those. You know, I talk about his scoring ability. You talk about his throw-in, his strength. And then a couple possessions ago, saw his tremendous speed. And Schlagbaum with uh, 38 goals, but he also has 18 assists yes. on the season. So 94 total points for this big green club. He has been a force on the offensive end. Saxton. Had to ease up on that one. She Snipke come up for the challenge, but here's Stecholi. Stecholi passes it off, looking for the give and go. Good challenge by the Big Green, but Clyde able to keep it. And now here's Snipke. Snipke moves up to the right side. Stecholi in tow, and Snipke just kicks this one out. Stecholi's going to have the throw in. Try to get it by Snipke and does. A fight. Three Ottoville defenders were there as this one goes out of bounds. As Grant Fortman not able to get a clean foot on it. So Schlagbaum with another throw in. Schlagbaum's going to throw it long one more time. Header goes out, ends up at the feet of Leash. Leash trying to find Trentman, but couldn't quite get it going forward. That came off his foot a little bit weird. So the Big Green are going to have to reset. Mansfield. Trying to see if he couldn't use his speed that time, but good defense by the Wildcats. This one gets kicked out of bounds. Yeah, I think the defense by Kaleida right now has been the story of all of this. You know, the Big Green have had some great opportunities, a couple shots on goal, and Kaleida has just been there every single time. Long cross, able to be kicked away by the Wildcats. Here's Lees working on the far side. Works back towards the middle. This one gets poked away. Kerner working hard on that far side. Ball's going to stay with the Wildcats with 35 seconds left to go. 
looking for just one opportunity, trying to see if they can't get one here at the end of the half. 25 seconds, Kerner sends it back. Long throw in coming. Ends up with a header off of the big green, but you see Kaleida continuing to work hard along that far sideline, but that time out of bounds by the Wildcats. And that is going to bring the first half to a close. Fast pace. We've seen opportunities by both teams so far, but nobody able to put one in the net. And as we go to halftime, it is 0-0. And, you know, Jerry, we talked about coming in just how competitive this game was going to be. Two teams very familiar with one another. You know, you mentioned the scoring, and, you know, you even mentioned how when you saw that it was a 2-2 tie, you know, how could that be right. with the scoring? But you know, even less now as we sit here at 0-0 going into halftime. Yeah, you sure can. It's been a great first half, you know, and you know you have to love defense, but boy, I, I give Kaleida a ton of credit because the opportunities have been there for the big green, but Kaleida has done everything they need to do defensively. So we will step aside. When we return, we will have second half action. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Boys High School Soccer on USA. Welcome back to Kaleida High School. I'd like to thank tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Kaleida Telephone Company. Our scoreboard is presented by Kaleida Telephone Company, now offering streaming TV service along with our digital cable. Good luck, Wildcats. Tonight's premier sponsor is the Ottoville Bank. Ottoville Bank, we are large enough to serve and small enough to know you. So second half action just about underway. Nate Garlock joined alongside by Jerry Snodgrass. And, you know, Jerry, we talked about it leading up and pretty much all through that first half. You know, these two teams very equally matched, you know, know each other very well. A lot of fast-paced action. Hasn't been a lot of downtime. Very clean game. And we sit here at a 0-0 tie to begin the second half. But a quick feed into the boxes. You saw Slagbaum trying to get uh, Preston Mansfield going forward, but not able to connect on that one. You know, and I guess this is the way it's supposed to be at this level. But you, you look at, I would say right now, you know, offensively, the big green are very, very, very good. Defensively, Kaleida is equally as good. So, you know, we've got a stalemate. Yeah, that's, you know, you're talking about a tough offense and a tough defense. Eventually something's going to have to give. You know, but here so far, neither team able to get the advantage. So. And you like to think that. We always talk about it as coaches, you know, defense wins championships. So, but again, that's not taking anything away from the Big Green's defense because they're just they're very good in, themselves. You know, Ottaville coming off a tough district semifinal as they took the victory one nothing over Continental. Continental, the other team this season that the Ottaville Big Green did not uh, beat, how it did not lose to, as that game was a one-one tie. As Ottaville comes into tonight's matchup, 17-0 and two. Kaleida on the other side, just two losses on the season. So two teams with a lot of success this year looking to take home that district championship today. Throw in comes in from the Wildcats. So we've seen a lot of battles around the midfield as both teams haven't been able to get much advantage as this one's going to go into the hands of Alex Siever. He's going to roll it out to his teammate Trentman. Trentman looking to set something up, feeds it back up. This one goes to the other side of the field, ends up at the feet of Quentin Schnipke. Right now here in the early going, seeing both teams just a little bit off the mark. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's, you know, and I don't, I don't think fatigue is going to be a big factor in this either. You know, we talked about the depth uh, from Ottaville, but, you know, the pace, the ball's been in the middle third a lot, and just, you know, we're not talking about, 85 degree weather, so I don't think that's going to play as big of a role. Another throw in on the far side, going to go to the big greens. They get that in. Ends up Snipke as he's going to play this one back. Trentman along the near side. See to what's good. Going to send it towards the middle, up towards lag ball, but this one's cut off. As Jaden Smith sends this one. And then a fight around midfield. And we're going to have a whistle. Goes to Ottoville. Ottoville going to try to move quickly. Try to see if they can't get numbers. Going to move around the middle of the field. Feeds it inside. And 
Looked like either Jaden Saxton or Preston Mansfield was the intended target on that. Neither one of them able to gather it in, but Trentman comes to the throw in. Once again, looking for Mansfield, but this one's sent away by Smith. Wildcats quickly moving into the backfield. Not able to get it. Carter Horseman is first one to the ball. He's going to kick it up the, the sideline. Mansfield, though, not able to gather it in as Smith one more time sends it up around midfield. Joel Horseman now. A little three-man game as this one gets poked away. Grant Lease able to save this one. Now slag ball. Pops it up. And the header is going to be won by the Wildcats, but ends up at the feet of the big green. And Brady first gathers it in. Looks like he's going to wait, let his offense move down, and see if he can't switch the field here. One more time, the long kick by Brady first but ends up coming down to the big green as right now the big green offense with all the pressure and all the opportunity. Just can't get a clear shot off. Steck shoulder that time, not able to save it. Throwing comes in, Preston Mansfield not looking for it that time, so the Wildcats win this one as you see Braylon Smith tries to feed it over. Steck shoulder moves it up. Here comes Smith. Just too much defense from that Ottawa Big Green around the midfield. Steck Schulte gets his foot out. This one's going to go out as Quint Snifke is on the ground. Looks like he might be injured. Yeah, kind of the way he came down. I don't know so much it's his ankle. It's just the way he came down. Hard hit as yeah. he comes up limping, but he's able to walk off under his own power. see some discussions that time between the coaching staff and the officials wondering why that wasn't a foul call but the ball will stay with the big green on the throw in you know so often you know from the distance especially you, we think it's a foul but you know the player usually is hitting the ball first and it ends up not being the case so the big green in complete control here in the early going, under 35 minutes left to go here in the second half as they have just can pretty much lived on their side of the field here in the early going. As possession has just been all big green. Yeah, we're going to have a corner kick, and I think that's uh, kind of a little surprising there because I think he tried to kick it out of bounds on the side. There's not that much of a win, but it just curled. No, so now they've changed it, and it will be a goal kick. So good call for the Wildcats that time. They're going to avoid the corner kick. So Jaden Smith with the kick gets it up just short of the midfield. Looking for Steck Schulte. See who they're going to call this one out on. I'm going to say last touch by Steck Schulte, it looks like. So another throw in for the big green. Grant Lease with the header over to Mansfield. This one ends up in the middle of the field. The big green with a little bit of patience, looking for slag bomb on the cut. Nice job by Smith to get his foot in there and knock that one away. And this one's going to go out of bounds. Grant Lease going to have a throw in opportunity for Otterville. And every time you think the big green have, uh oh, you know, here it's going to come. Clyde is right there. So slag bomb tries with the header. Didn't get that one clean. This one's going to bounce up to the midfield, but Ottoville has the numbers. They're going to win this one. Here's Alex Lees now on the far side, trying to feed Mansfield. A little bit too much on that one as Smith has been very busy on that back line. They will boot this one up. You know, something I didn't say much at the start of the game, didn't say at all. I probably should have. You know, I talked about the great defense by Kaleida, but they also have a great head coach. Mark Zubik is, is known around the state of Ohio as being one of the best coaches. And I could be wrong, but I 
think he was inducted into their Hall of Fame last year. If I'm wrong, he should be. So I guess, too, when you have the field named after you or the press box at one or the other, uh, you're pretty good. But he's been here a long time, and very successful coach, and, uh, does a great job, and it's no wonder they're very good defensively. Little give and go that time, doesn't work, ends up out of bounds. So here comes Quint Snipke with the throw in. Take a look at the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard, a 0-0 tie, but Ottaville trying to change that as the saw Mansfield send it into the box, but not able to connect. And one more time out of bounds and a throw in coming from Horseman. Mansfield with a nice little kick behind that time as Saxton is able to win it. Feeds by Alex Lease. Lease trying to get around a defender, going to send it up into the box as he works that back line. Here's Schlagbaum. Schlagbaum able to squeeze one in. And Kellen Schlagbaum with great footwork, great control, is able to put it in for the first score of the game. Wow, and, and I'll tell you, what patience by the big green. You know, nothing, they just waited until they had the right opportunity. And just excellent patience to, to sneak that in. So we will step aside. One nothing, Ottoville on top. A big goal by Kellen Schlagbaum. We'll be right back on WLSN. Welcome back. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Ottoville Big Green is Ottoville Bank. We are large enough to serve and small enough to know you. The Wildcats kick it off, trying to see if maybe they can't get the score back quickly. As Great job by Alex Lease to work that back line, not let that ball go out of bounds. Schlagbaum put himself in great position to seal off his defender. Once he had it at his feet, got in position that he wanted, is able to sneak that one by Brady first. Ottoville gets a big goal to go on top with 31 minutes left to go here in the game. See some intensity picking up from you the sure Wildcats. Do, I think they, they understand how important getting a goal here in the next few minutes is, or at least making sure that Ottawa doesn't put any more in. You mentioned the defense of the Big Green, only giving up five goals this year so far. They have been stout, and the Wildcats need to try to get one back. I think that's so difficult to do with the speed and the strength of, of the Big Green. Now here's Snipke. Almost had that one poked away. Here goes Leash. Leash working around, has this one poked away, sent out of bounds by the Wildcats. Great hustle that time. What hustle. As that one looked like it was for sure going out of bounds, but Horseman got onto it, was able to get a foot on it, knocked it out of bounds by Ottoville. So Kaleida going to have the throw in after a great hustle play by Horseman. Bachrath going to have the throw in. Trying to decide where he wants to send it. Bachrath gets it right back. And then this one gets sent down by Elise to Smith. Smith with the header. Fight for it as Schlagbaum has some contact with Fersh. And that one is going to go against, I believe it was at first, it was actually number 13. E.J. Miller with the foul. So it's going to And you can really see the intensity picking up now. You're right. That goal just changed a lot of that intensity. Horseman's free kick gets sent in. Going to have a fight as Schlagbaum tries to get to it. Going to go out of bounds. And we're going to have a goal kick for the Wildcats. So a dangerous send that time, but the Ottaville not able to do anything with it. The defense from the Wildcats plays a nice ball as now we're going to see Brady first send this one deep. And instead he gets it out to the feet at first as he's going to move it over to Smith. Smith feeds it off and here comes Braylon Smith able to stay with it. Here comes the Wildcats. They may have an opportunity as they're going to move to the left side of the goal. This one gets poked away and the big green you see right there what makes them so good and why they've had the success that they've had just when it looks like the Wildcats are going to have an opportunity, they quickly switch the field and send it back the other way. Strong foot that time to add to it. 
So now here comes Quinn Snipke trying to work down that right channel. Ends up going out of bounds. So another throw in is coming for, I thought it was the Wildcats. Yeah, it's hard for us to see that line. But it looks like maybe it is going to stay with the big green. And they must have called yeah. some sort of foul. I'm not sure on who. But we're going to have a free kick for the big green. He's going to send it to the front. Have a little bit of a fight for it. Ends up at the feet of Braylon Smith. Smith. Moves it over midfield. Has it poked away by Horseman. Steck Schulte with the throw in. Steck Schulte quickly moves it up. Kerner trying to battle with Horseman. Has it poked away. Siebenek, though, moving through. And right now, Kaleida just can't quite find space. Every time they try to move somewhere, it seems like there's two or three. Ottawa players. What a cross Good. that time by Schlagbaum. What a feed by Schlagbaum to Mansfield. Mansfield even had opportunities, able to get his foot on it, settle it, trying to see if he couldn't get a good kick, but ends up being a good save by Brady first. As Yadaville with a good opportunity that time, but not able to get their second goal of the day. Give yeah, first a lot of credit for that because that was a great offensive play. Here comes Kerner. Schultz not able to control it. Gets poked away by Trentman. Trentman moves up. He's challenged. And Schlagbaum, though, is able to boot it over to Mansfield. We're seeing some really good midfield play by both teams here today. And we're going to have a push that time. And I think it wasn't meant really meant to be a push by Mormon, as he was more maybe just right. trying to balance himself. But the collided player off balance goes down. And it really didn't seem to matter as Ottaville able to gain control quickly. Now Mansfield moves it up, gets it at the feet of Schlagbaum. Wow. Schlagbaum trying to turn to his right. Uh, and I think we had an offsides call, so it's going to go back to the Wildcat as Schlagbaum had some pretty heavy contact by two or three different Wildcat players that time. And you know, sometimes after that kind of effort, you think that maybe just needs a second, kind of gather right. himself back up. He's been very busy here in the second half. They know how to do it. Now Schlagbaum is going to get substituted out. Can't imagine he's going to get too much of a break, but he's going to go out, get a drink of water, try to catch his breath a little bit. Let's see if maybe Kaleida can't try to take advantage here with Schlagbaum sitting out. Kerner. Kerner trying to battle for it. I don't think Schlagbaum now, will be out very long. And now Siebenek tries to feed it up. Going to have a race for it. Alex Sieber comes out, and he's going to gather it in. Thought about it for a second. The, maybe he was going to grab it. They thought about kicking it. Well, he had his hand called by Bachrath as he was quickly coming up to try to see if he couldn't take advantage of a miscue. So now here's Snipke. Feeds it up to Mansfield. Gets poked out of bounds as Grant Fortman sends it. And actually, we're going to have a foul prior to that. So a free kick by Jaden Smith for the Wildcats. 25-05 left to go here in the second half. Ottoville Big Green on top. When you take a look at the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard. That one's going to be out. Going to go back to the Big Green. As Schlagbaum back on, as is Grant Leash. Like Grant Helmke has also checked in for the Wildcats as Dawson Schultz is going to take a seat. That's a good break for a couple of those guys. Long kick ends up being caught by uh, Brady Fersh. High kick by Fersh coming out of goal. Steck Schultz is going to try to control, but a little bit too much ends up at the feet. Of Schlagbaum. Schlagbaum tries to move it forward. Ends up getting returned by the Wildcats. Here goes first. First trying to move around. Couldn't get through that defense of Ottoville. And you know, at some point, you know, Kaleida is going to have to maybe take some chances here. They're going to have to start sending some of those defenders up to try to all. 
excuse me, offset the balance of offense and defense. Try to see if they can't get an advantage. You know, down one goal. Any opportunity is going to be big for the Wildcats. I'd like to take a second to thank our scoreboard sponsor. Our scoreboard is presented by Kaleida Telephone Company, now offering streaming TV service along with our digital cable. Good luck, Wildcats. Steck Schulte, that one goes out. He's going to have a quick throw in. Can't quite connect as he was trying to find his teammate. This one goes out. And I believe that one is going to go out off of yeah, Kaleida. Off I didn't think it did. So we're going to have a uh, free kick for the big green. Popped up in the air is Kaleida trying to see if they can't win this possession. Nice job by Slagball, dribbling through some traffic that time. Maybe we'll control it. Here comes Trentman, working along that left channel. He's going to send it into the middle. Steck Schulte's there to head it away. Ends up back to Slagball, though. Slagball pops it up. Has first, is going to run over, get a foot on it. First working against Snipke. And this one's going to go out. Going to stay on this side of the field as it's going to go to the big green. I've been so impressed by Snipke. Uh, throughout the game. I haven't mentioned his name too much, but Quentin Schnipke on that right side, you know, I think oh, he's, there's no way he's catching up to that. He's just got tremendous speed on that right side. Long throw in coming. Slag bomb one more time, and that header goes back to first. Brady first able to come up with the save. Big left foot of boot from first that time. Ends up all the way down into big green territory. Here's Mansfield trying to feed it over. Saxton, he's going to send it up. First gathers that one in. Ottoville so quick when that's, they get the ball on their side and move it up, finding open guys. It's just what makes this offense and their relentless pressure so good. And it makes them so good defensively. It just, you know, every time you think Kalite has got, you know, numbers, it's out of there. You see a lot of substitutions coming in for the Wildcat as they're going to send four guys in. We see number 21, Dominic Bachraff, back into the game. Number 10, Dawson Schultz coming back into the game. See if we can't get the rest of the numbers for you. As a lot of traffic coming in all at the same time. Hard to tell who was coming in and who was leaving. I believe Caden Lozier also checked back into the game during that stoppage. Foul over there, but I think it was another one of those. I don't think he was trying to push him to gain an advantage. He was just trying to control himself and not, not get toppled over. So Drew first with the free kick. We'll see if he wants to send it in, see if the Wildcats can't make something happen here. Just over 20 minutes left to go in the game. Sends this one to the box. Header gets popped up. No Wildcats yeah, going for the ball. Is the, I think the uh, big green that time got a little frozen. Weren't sure who's going to go for it. We have a fight for the loose ball. Smith trying to fight against Leash. Good challenge as Leash ends up just kicking this one out of bounds. But great hustle yeah. play that time as number three, Grant Leash for the big green. That was a real opportunity that time for Kaleida. It's a good fight between him and Braylon Smith. And now it's going to be Leash versus Sivanek. Out one more time, and this time to the big green. Throwin's going to come in, going to look for Schlagbaum along the sideline. Schlagbaum does a great job of sealing the defender. He's going to send it up, see if it can't be a race for his teammate. And Brady first is going to come out and gather that one in. 19 le minutes left to go in the game. The Wildcats, you got to think at some point here. Yeah, it's, I agree. You know, they, they got to start taking chances. Slag ball. Going against two Wildcat defenders. Able to get it up the left channel. Looking for the cross. Siebenek on the defense. Gets it over to Mansfield. Mansfield trying to feed it into Slag ball. Slag ball not able to get around the defense. 
But you did see Jaden Saxton kind of come out of nowhere that time and get a foot on the ball. This one's going to go out for a goal kick. Boy, Schlagbaum is so good controlling that ball. He has such good foot skills. Comes Bach Rath working against Leash. Leash has been very busy here the last few minutes. He's going to win this challenge. Bachrath comes from behind, though, and this one's going to go out. It's going to stay with the Big Green. Grant Lees looking for the throw-in. See if he looks for Slagbaum or if they try to get it deeper into the box. It is the Slagbaum down into the corner. Slagbaum working against E.J. Miller. Tries to work that corner. Bachrath has it taken away by Saxton, but here comes Siebenek. Siebenek now. Saxon lost his footing there. Siebenek moved to his right, kicks this one up. As Trentman goes, Bachrath tried to make something happen. And as he tried to kick it over to his teammate, he, I think he maybe forgot he was out of bounds that time. So it's going to stay with the big green on the throw in. And as Garrett Trentman works it up over to Leash. And Leash this time going to be out of bounds on it. So right back to the Wildcats. Long throw in. Bachrath. Going to have another battle around the midfield. Ottaville wins this one. Looks like they were trying to feed it ahead to Schlagbaum, but not quite far um, out wide enough. So Brady first comes up with it. He's going to look to send it deep one more time. They're definitely not slowing down, Jerry. No, we're seeing not. lots of effort and energy out of both teams. You know, Ottaville not resting just on the one goal, and Kaleida obviously trying to see if they can't get the equalizer. Both teams putting the pressure on. This has been a great soccer game. So, look like Leash, maybe Snipke over on that far side trying to steal a throw in. Talked about that earlier, and actually, I believe that was Saxon who had grabbed it, trying to see if he couldn't get it going <laughs> his way, but does end up going back to the Wildcats. Here's Siebenek right at midfield. Passes over to Bachrath. Bachrath has it taken away by Trentman. Slagball trying to run to it. Nice challenge that time. See who they say last touch by. It's going to stay with the big green. Schlagbaum with the throw in. He's trying to direct traffic that time. Ends up getting it out to Saxton. Saxton trying to feed it in. Gets this one blocked. And it's going to go out last touched by the Wildcats. Throw in's going to go to the big green. And I think the winner of this game, I think, advances to uh, Tiffin, I think. Yeah, regional semis will be Wednesday in Tiffin for the winner of this game. Slagbaum with his patented long throw into the middle. This one gets headed out by Smith. Here's Smith, and here's uh, Braylon Smith. It was Jaden Smith with the header out to Braylon Smith. Now we get a fight along that far sideline. Out of bounds by the Wildcats. Audible does such a great job with their angles. Yes. When, they, when they're fighting on those loose balls, you know, you see, I mean, I don't have any official stats in front of me, but I'd say 60 to 70 percent of these throw-ins have been going to the big green just because of how well they do with their positioning along the sidelines. Right. This one gets sent out by Kaleida. So another throw-in coming for the big green with under 15 minutes left to play here in this district final. And we've only seen, what, maybe two corner kicks so far? Yeah, very few. Carter Horseman fighting on along that far sideline. He's going to take the throw in for Ottoville. Looking for Mansfield. Slag bomb back there as well. Had her out of bounds. And one more time, Ottoville just moving the ball up, working that sideline, getting lots of throw ins. Here comes Snipke. Snipke looking to thread the needle to Saxton that time, but ends up back at his feet. So knocked away by the Wildcats. 
Braylon Smith going to try to control. Gets it fed up. Steck shoulder. Wow, what a nice good. deflection that time. And the Wildcats not able to take advantage. This one's going to be sent out by Tr uh, Trentman. Excuse me. Great sequence that time by Kaleida. Joel Horseman was coming quickly. And Trentman able to knock that one away as Sebenek goes for the 50-50. And we see Horseman able to win that one. So now here comes the big green quickly working up the field. Schlag ball. Leads leash. You see Jaden Smith knock this one up high. Schlag ball now feeds it back in. Trentman not able to gather this one. Try to work. This one's going to get by both players. We're going to have a race for it. Mansfield using that incredible speed of his to try to get to the ball. Great job by Snipke winning the one on one on that far side as this one gets sent out of bounds. Throw in coming to the big green is Horseman. Going to throw it up the sideline. Looked like this one never even made it in bounds oh. as the official gathered that <laughs> one in. So it goes back up to where it was out originally with the Wildcats having the throw in. Bachrath trying to get it up. This one's headed right back out of bounds by the big green. Bachrath one more time. Trying to find Steckscholdy on the one-on-one. -on -one. Horseman has done great on him all night or all afternoon long. Really shutting Steck Schulte down. Now here's Jaden Smith along the right side. It's going to work, work up. And Schlagbaum comes up for the challenge. Siebenek comes in. He takes it now. This one gets poked out. It's going to stay with the Wildcats. Boy, Schlagbaum just has a motor that never stops. He is constantly He's gone from around the, other the ball. Side isn't of the field he? over here. Following the ball as it comes through, and somehow every time it seems like Slag Bomb's in the mix. And a whistle by the officials. We're going to have a substitution as we're going to see Saxton check into the game. Jane Saxton back in, as was Grant Lease. So we see Alex Lease and Andy Mormon check out for Ottoville. This one's going to roll out. We're going to say last touched by the big green. So Jaden Smith, long throw in attempt here. A little bit too much on that one. Now Mansfield's going to have it. Smith does a nice job recovering, gets back to the middle of the field. Wins the one-on-one -on -one under the right. Siebenek there was for some help, but gets poked away. Now here comes Schlagball. Schlagball waits for his opportunity, feeds his teammate as Leach works that corner. Going to send a cross, and this one's going to be off target. Going to go out and going to have a goal kick for the Wildcats. How about that with Schlagbaum feeding? Uh, you know, he saw that, saw him coming up from behind him. I don't know how he saw him. It just fed him perfectly. Once again, Schlagbaum with the ball as we've reached just about 10 minutes left to play. And at some point here, the Wildcats, they're going to have to try to sell out. Got to get some, got to get some numbers as this Ottoville defense has just been absolutely stifling. And we're going to have a trip. This one's going to stay yeah, with so. the Wildcats, it looks like, as we see number 18, Trey Landwer, lose his shoe on that play. So I had to wait for the whistle. As not everybody was quite set. As now we have Joel Horseman taking a second, tying his shoe. So we had one lose, one have to tie, but now we can get back to play. Jaden Smith. Now we see all 10 players for both teams on yes, one we side. Sure do, don't we? But you still have, what is that, seven Ottaville players on that back line trying to deny anything going towards the goal. Through first, fighting hard up at the top to win that one. A little bit too much on the feed, though. We see Schultz trying to win against Horseman on the far side. A little bit of contact as they try to win those one-on-ones. This one goes out, and it's going to be a throw in for the big green. Now here's first, he was able to get his foot on it, but couldn't 
get his footing up underneath him to get to it. And now Schlagbaum, he's going to clear it. No other big green player was moving towards us. Nice slide tackle that time by Saxton. And now we have another Kaleido player down. This one's going to go to first. Brady first comes up with it. So we're seeing a little bit more physical play here as this one's coming closer to coming to an end. 8.40 left to go in the first half. Smith trying to feed it up. Couldn't get quite to it. And now here's Drew first one more time. A little give and go. Oh, yes. His first was trying to get through the defense. See some contact, and we're going to have a penalty on the big green. So a good opportunity here for the Wildcats is they're going to have a free kick from about seven, eight yards outside the box, and we'll see if the Wildcats are able to do anything with it. Prior to this kick, we will take a break. When we come back, we'll have the free kick by the Kaleido Wildcats. We'll be right back on WOSN. Free kick by first. He's going to send it in off of an OG, or excuse me, an Ottoville player. Goes up high, ends up at the feet of the Wildcats. They can't get that one to go. Drew first from back out one more time. Header by Stevenek. And this one isn't wow. able to go in. So a quick sequence that time by the Wildcats. Trying to see if they couldn't get one to go in. But the Ottoville, the Ottoville defense stands tall, as you see Lease trying to move. And we have a push that time. And I think that time that was a little bit of frustration. Yeah, it was, yeah. You saw EJ Miller saying he was pulling on to me. But you can't let yourself get in a moment like this, guys. Sebenek had won that ball and was moving upfield, unfortunately. That penalty call is going to give a free kick to the big green. Yeah, that, that's so critical is maintaining the composure. Uh, so often you don't you kind of lose your what you, what you really are you know trying to do and get behind. Long kick by Trapman this time going to result in a goal kick. I'd like to thank tonight's premier sponsor. The premier sponsor for the Ottaville Big Green is Ottaville Bank. We are large enough to serve and small enough to know you. Taking a look at the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard. The Big Green is on top. 1-0, 6.25 left to play in the game. Another cross and finally Mansfield able to connect. Snipke on the cross. Mansfield comes up with the side kick off his right foot and a, a great goal for Mansfield as we have seen all around the goal tonight. Hadn't been able to connect, finally able to bury one in the net. Yeah, and very few chances before when they've had them. Oh, wow, what a, what a great sequence there. Great pass. We've seen Snipke do a lot of good work on that outside, sending crosses in throughout the entire game. Finally able to find one of his teammates as Mansfield did a great job working along the backside to finish. Ottoville on top, 2-0. We'll step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Kaleida Telephone Company, now offering streaming TV service along with our digital cable. Good luck, Wildcats. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Ottoville Big Green is Ottoville Bank. We are large enough to serve and small enough to know you. Taking a look at the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard, we see Ottoville on top, 2 nothing after the Garrett M Mansfield score to put um, a two-goal difference on top as, excuse me, Preston Mansfield. Excuse me, I knew that was wrong as soon as I said it, Jerry. I knew it wasn't, Gary. <laughs> But Preston Mansfield with the great sidekick to get that one in. And now with a two-goal lead and 540 left to go, the Wildcats really have their backs against the wall. Now here's Snipke. He's going to work over to Slagbaum. Not quite enough on it. Great recovery by the Wildcats. But here's Saxton. Now here comes the Wildcats. Able to win it up top. Drew first going to move against Saxton as we're going to have a whistle. Nope, nope, I believe that was a whistle coming from somewhere else. Trentman, they go ahead this one up. You see Braylon Smith. 
Smith now works it over to Sibanek, gets it right back. First now trying to see where he wants to put it. Puts it out wide. As is a teammate, Connor Worth, tries to race out to it. Four forty-five left to go, out of bounds. Ball's gonna go. Otterville's done a nice job on our throw-ins tonight as the clock continues to count down as Otterville has done a tremendous job all night long on the defensive side of things to keep Kaleida off the scoreboard. And they sit here with a two-goal lead, 2-0. Two Kaleida, I think they know they have to score quickly here. They're going to bring everybody up. They just don't have a choice at this point. You got to yep. try to do something. You need an opportunity. You need something to break your way. Lease just going to kick it behind the defense. Jaden Smith moves it over to first. Through first. He's had a good game tonight. Been very busy. Now we're seeing some contact. As Ottoville can sense a district championship and Kaleida just looking to see if they can't get something going offensively to give themselves an opportunity. Throw in coming, looking for somewhere to go to. Ends up to Bachrath. Bachrath moves it up ahead. See a good fight as Nick Fope that time is getting pulled on. So going to have a free kick for the Wildcats. A little deep this time. You'd obviously like to see that one a little bit closer. Maybe give yourself an opportunity going towards the goal. But here, maybe feed into the box and hope that one of your guys can come free. Maybe get a header here with three minutes left to go in the game. Yep, good opportunity here. Long kick. Going to bend back towards his teammates. Not quite deep enough. This one is going to be controlled by the Wildcats, though, as he's going to miss it. Here comes Leash. Leash going to challenge. Gets it over to First. First can't get his foot on it. Mansfield. Preston Mansfield with that speed, that would have been dangerous if he'd have been able to get there. There, has, there was nobody on the backside to stop him from going one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, but Kaleida able to control it. Yeah, Mansfield's speed too. I, you know, Again, all the players with Big Green, but he's been impressive throughout the game. You really got to give it up to the Big Green, though. They have won the 50-50 balls today. They have controlled possession. And they've given themselves lots of opportunities. They've really owned the midfield as well. Controlling those three phases of the game has given them pretty good looks. And they've been able to cash in twice tonight. And I know that Coach Mark will really will talk about that to his team afterwards. That that's one of the things they focused on so much is winning those 50-50 balls, being aggressive with the ball, and they've done that. That's, that's something that they have, I think, is the difference in the game. Under two minutes left to go here in this district final. Ottoville on top, 2 nothing. First is going to pop this one up. And now Schlagbaum, he's going to win it. He's going to work against four collided defenders. Ends up losing it. Steck Schulte, he gets it. This one gets taken away by Saxton. Saxton feeds it over to Leash along that right channel. Excuse me, left channel. And now Mansfield. Mansfield just working through. Speed and tremendous foot skills. 115 left to go. And it looks like Ottoville right now just trying to, don't want to make any mistakes, trying to control. Come away with this victory. Ottoville Bill Green, tremendous season so far. Looks like they're going to come away with a district championship as we see Schnipke sends a long cross this time. And I know that Big Green are no stranger to the regional tournament, but I would have to think they would have a very good chance of getting through that regional. So a throw in with 40 seconds left to go for the Wildcats. And Ottoville going to have their, uh, their run continue. They're going to stay undefeated on the season as they are going to have a huge victory tonight and move on to play in a regional semifinal Wednesday night up in Tiffin. And, you know, watching tonight, you, you can just see that this team, lots of talent, lots of speed. This defense has just been something else tonight. It has been senior dominated, senior leadership. Yeah. 
Trentman kicks it one more time out. And that is going to bring this game to a close. The Ottoville Big Green are going to be the Division Three District Champions for 2022. As you see the bench file out, everybody coming out to celebrate. They're going to enjoy this one tonight. We will step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back to Kaleida High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Jerry Snodgrass, where we just saw the Ottawa Big Green knock off the Kaleida Wildcats 2-0 to become district champions. Goals tonight at the 31-26 mark. Kellen Schlagbaum's able to put one in to put Ottawaville on top. And then with 6.22 left in the game, Preston Mansfield able to put another one in off a nice sidekick from a feed coming in from Quentin Snipke and to make it our final score of two to nothing. You know, Jerry, we talked about leading into this, the high scoring of the Ottawa Big Green, you know, what, how many goals they've been able to put up. But this Collider team was uh, one of their tougher games, a 2-2 tie just a few weeks ago. But that defense from Ottawaville tonight was just something else. You know, both teams very strong defensively, but just on the offensive end, Ottawaville just possesses so much skill, so much strength, so much speed, and you can see why they've had the season that they've had. So the Ottawaville Big Green, as they are going to be awarded their district championship here shortly as the Kaleida Wildcats are getting their district runner-up, not to take anything away from the Wildcats, as they're going to finish 12-3 and three on the season. A lot of success out of this program as well. You know, district, you know, only one team can win, and only one team gets to move on after every game, especially once you hit tournament time, not taking away anything from this Kaleida Wildcat team, but they just ran into a buzzsaw, buzzsaw in the out of a big green who, you know, the way that they play and the way that you see them accomplish things out here, you know, they look like they're built for a long tournament run. Yeah, they, and you have to remember for, you know, for Kaleida, they were playing to be one of the best 16 teams in the state of Ohio in this division. So you're right, you take nothing away from them. And I guess, you know, I feel blessed that we're able to be here on a beautiful Saturday afternoon, you know, against two very, very good teams. So that's just going to about wrap it up from Kaleida High School. I'd like to thank our sponsors one more time, Kaleida Telephone Company, our scoreboard sponsor, and then our premier sponsor, Ottoville Bank. Thank you for it. Um, everything that you guys do for WOSN, we appreciate the sponsorships tonight. So one final time from Kaleida High School, the Ottoville Big Green come away as district champions with a 2-0 victory over the Kaleida Wildcats. We appreciate everybody tuning in. For Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Nate Garlock. Have a great night, everybody. Welcome back, joined by head coach Dustin Markward. And, and coach, congratulations on the big victory. You have to be happy with the team's effort today. Um, you know, a really tightly contested game, especially in that first half. But in the second half, the offense finally able to get going a little bit. Yes, thank you very much. And I think you said it right there is the effort is the, is the key. And you go to a game like Clyde and Ottaville or any PCL match in tournament for that factor, um, the effort is huge. Um, we, we strongly talk to these kids, you know, beginning of this game that, um, you know, effort is going to help win this game. And I felt like uh, our midfield play, especially with the effort and the discipline that they had getting after, it that really help us put us in position to, to get a couple of those goals later on and help us win. Now, talk to me a little bit about your defense. Five goals given up all year. That's it. Uh, another shutout today against Kaleida. Another big effort. Those guys continue to just give you guys lots of opportunities on the offensive end. They send things up, help keep that pressure um, on the offensive side of things. But they have come up big time and time again. And again today, another tremendous effort out of them. Yes, absolutely. Um, it, it does start with our back four. They've been playing a lot of disciplined soccer lately. Um, they don't make a too lot of you know mistakes. Midfield is huge too. Um, the effort that they bring to help drop back to help the defense is, is big too. Um, uh, if I stand correct, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, of, of all the games um, f out of, uh, what is it, uh, four of them, we've allowed a goal. So we've had probably about, I would say, 15 or 16 shutouts in the season. And so, yeah, they've done a really good job of getting after it, keeping what's in front of them there, and not making many mistakes. 
you know, this season, obviously, a lot of success. You know, undefeated season, only the two ties. Back-to-back -back games, though, you guys have had a chance to come back up against those two teams that you didn't lose to, but you didn't win either. How good does it feel to kind of avenge those, come away with the victories, and now looking forward to the regional semis? Oh, huge. You know, I mean, we heading into the tournament, we knew that we would probably be matched up with those two teams again. And I think the kids wanted it. We wanted it because it was the only two non-wins that we, you know, didn't have throughout the season. And so, you know, we used that as motivation going into the games this, uh, in the tournament and uh, they, they played hard enough and we made some changes that, that we didn't do in the regular season game and it paid off for us in the end. Looking forward to that regional semifinal match coming up regardless of who you guys face what are some of the key things you guys are going to work on leading up to that? Um, just playing fast again. I felt like if we play fast, possess the ball, um, we're going to be in real good shape. Um, you know, defensively, we got to stay sharp back there, um, get rid of the ball for feet. You know, that way we can we can possess and, and get some opportunities up front. You know, we're going to be playing some good teams. You know, as long you know longer that we're in this, and they're going to have some good strong midfield play. So, yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is to get our guys moving around and and not giving up on certain plays. Just bringing the effort. You know, we we got the talent I think to, to get to where we were today and, and, and then some and so we just got to put forth the effort and keep battling and we're going to be in good shape. The Big Green bring home another district championship this year knocking off Kaleida 2-0 on their way to a regional semifinal action in Tiffin next week. Looking forward to that game. Thanks for joining us on WOSN.